dig into Bill Gates' thoughts on this whole AI explosion that's happening. Yeah. We're right there with you. We're going deep on his interview with the Next Big Idea Club on yeah. YouTube. And uh, let me tell you, he does not hold back. It's really fascinating how he compares seeing that first graphical user interface, like back at Xerox Park, right. to his experience with GPT-4. And he actually says that GPT-4 was even more impactful. More impactful than seeing like the invention of the computer desktop as we know it. Yeah. Okay, now you've got my attention. <laughs> he argues that it really comes down to the kind of intelligence that each of those innovations like unlocks. Okay. And the graphical interface was revolutionary, but GPT-4 can actually read and write and grasp information. Uh -huh. It's not just presenting it, it's demonstrating a whole other level of understanding. So not just like a fancy calculator, but something that's actually starting to think. Right. That's both really cool and also kind of scary. Yeah, definitely. And he actually says that superintelligence in AI isn't some far off concept. It's happening now. Hold on. Superhuman AI is already here. What does that even look like? He's talking about AI exceeding human reliability in lots of different areas, especially when you think about white collar jobs. Okay. So like analyzing, making decisions, being creative. He's seeing AI outperform humans in those areas already. So I'm picturing robots taking over my job now. Oh. But really, what are the implications for things like education and healthcare? Those are two areas he's really passionate about. Okay. Imagine AI tutors that are personalized to how you learn best, All right. available to anyone with a phone. Or what about medical diagnoses and advice accessible through your phone, especially mm -hmm. in places where healthcare is hard to get? like democratizing all that expertise and those resources. Exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. And he also brings up this really interesting challenge in AI development, which is something he calls metacognition. Meta what? Now, break that down for me. Okay. So basically it means AI needs to develop like a deeper understanding of its own thinking process. Okay. Right now it's good at doing tasks, but it doesn't always get the reason behind them. Okay. Like for example, email. Mm -hmm. It's just chronological right now. Right. But imagine an AI assistant that understands what you're working on and prioritizes your emails based on that. Interesting. What's relevant, what's urgent. Yeah. You know. Okay, so it's not just about organizing my inbox, it's about AI actually understanding my goals and like the bigger picture. Exactly. Yeah, that's next level stuff right there. Okay. But let's talk about the economic side of things for a sec. Okay. Gates kind of hinted that AI could lead to like a 300% increase in productivity. Yeah. What does that even mean for everyday people? Well, he's basically saying AI could make us all way more productive. Okay. And not just faster either, but like imagine getting rid of all those little annoying tasks that eat up your time. Right. What could you do with all that extra time and energy? I don't know. I'm excited and terrified at the same time. Right. <laughs> like, bring on the robot assistant. But then again, what happens to all the jobs if AI takes over? He gets that. He yeah. actually gives this example of a CEO who used AI to, like, transcribe sales calls mm -hmm. and then generate follow-up emails automatically. Interesting. And it ended up cutting his sales team by half. Wow, 50%. That's a lot. So yeah. what's the solution there? He's a big believer in adapting as a society. Okay. Maybe even with some government help along the way. Okay. Like he doesn't give specific policies, mm -hmm. but he does say we'll need some kind of safety net. Right. And probably some retraining programs to help people switch to new jobs. So it's like we're heading into this huge societal shift. We need to be ready for it. Definitely. But, you know, some people are still skeptical. They're like, where's the killer app for AI, you know? Yeah. Where's the thing that proves it's actually useful? Yeah, he's heard that, and he has a pretty good counter argument. He says, look at AI power translation now. Okay. Or those really advanced coding tools or image editing software. Huh. Those are pretty mind-blowing. You're right. It's like magic. You can tell AI to make a picture bigger. And it just fills in the blanks. Exactly. Yeah. And we already take it for granted. We do. It's true. He sees AI as something that's going to be everywhere, making everything we do faster, better, easier. Uh huh. He even uses this phrase, white collar work will be almost free. Oh, okay. Which is a pretty striking thought. It is. It makes you wonder about the future of work, though, right? Yeah. Like if machines can do all the thinking, what's left for us? And that's where Gates gets really philosophical. Yeah, you know, right. he's wrestling with this idea of a post-scarcity world where AI solves all our problems. Wow. And is better than us at a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, so then what's the point of humans? It's like something out of a movie. It really is. He even joked about AI being good at pickleball one day. Right. And, you know, he's competitive, so I wouldn't put it past him. 
He admits he doesn't have all the answers to these big questions, though. Right. He sees it as something future generations will have to deal with. Yeah, it's a lot. But he's clearly fascinated by it all. But he's also aware of the risks, you know? Of course. Yeah. Like, what if the wrong people get their hands on this technology? Exactly. That's why he's so big on regulation. Okay. He thinks governments need to set some rules for how AI is developed and used. So not just letting tech companies do whatever they want. He doesn't seem too keen on that. Yeah, makes sense. Especially with how fast everything's changing. He thinks governments need to put people first. Right. Make sure AI is used for good. And he's not talking about some far-off dystopia either, huh. right? He's worried about stuff that's happening now, like deep fakes, spreading misinformation, right. or AI being biased against certain groups when it comes to hiring or even medical diagnoses. It's serious stuff. It yeah. can really impact people's lives. So some safeguards definitely make sense. Okay, makes sense. But we've talked about the job losses. What about this whole productivity boom AI could bring? Yeah. Yeah, so it's not just jobs disappearing, but maybe like this insane economic growth too, right? Right. He sees that as a real possibility, yeah. but he's careful about it. Mm -hmm. He says, even if everyone gets wealthier thanks to AI, right. we got to make sure that wealth is shared fairly. Okay. He even talks about like using taxes to fight inequality yeah. and fund better social programs and stuff. That's great in theory, but like it needs so much cooperation to make that happen. Yeah, he knows that. Yeah. But he also says AI is changing how we compete. Like, he uses the example of the chip industry, okay. where a company that designs chips, not even makes them, yeah. became worth trillions because of AI. Really? That's wild. It's not about size anymore. It's who can use these tools best. So a small hospital could actually be better than a big one just because of AI. Exactly. It's about being smart, not just big. That's kind of hopeful, actually. Like, it gives the little guy a chance. He seems to think so, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. For sure. So is he optimistic about all this? I'd say cautiously optimistic. Okay. He loves how much money and brain power is going into AI right now. Yeah. He even calls it a mania, like the early days of cars. So hold on tight. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Pretty much. It's like we're on the edge of something huge, but we don't know what's next. And that's what makes what Gates says so interesting, right? Definitely. Yeah. He's not just watching. He's building this future. Right. Investing in it, working on it. He gets the good and the bad. And he's really thinking about the big picture stuff, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Even in, admits he doesn't have all the answers, which honestly is kind of refreshing. Right. It's like he's saying, this is bigger than all of us. we got to figure it out together. So if we had to sum up this whole deep dive into Bill Gates and AI, okay. what would be the one thing for our listeners to take away? That AI is here now, it's changing everything, and it's up to us to shape how it goes. It's like we have this powerful new tool, but we need to use it responsibly. Exactly. Gates' message is be smart, be ethical, yeah. and work together to make AI good for everyone. Well said. This has been amazing. It feels like we've only just scratched the surface of AI. Just dipped our toes in, haven't we? To everyone listening, if you're as into this as we are, Go explore some more. <laughs> yeah. Read Bill Gates's book, Dive into the World of AI. And most importantly, start thinking about how you want to be a part of this. Because the future of AI isn't set in stone. It's being decided right now, and we all have a say. Now that's something to think about. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Bill Gates's vision of the AI revolution. Well, See you next time.